Welcome to a short video overview of the Resuscitation Council's 2015 guidelines. I'm Dr David Pitcher, co-author of the guidelines on peri-arrest arrhythmia. I'm going to focus on what constitutes a peri-arrest arrhythmia, on assessing patients with an arrhythmia, and on the importance of obtaining timely expert help in both identifying and treating an arrhythmia. In the 2015 guidelines, there are no major changes in the recommended approach to treating peri-arrest arrhythmia. It's important to remember that these guidelines are intended to help non-specialists to assess and offer immediate treatment for an arrhythmia in a situation that is potentially life-threatening for the patient. They are not a definitive guide to the optimal assessment and treatment of an arrhythmia in the longer term. When considering a peri-arrest arrhythmia, we should consider two possible situations. Firstly, there are situations in which an arrhythmia is contributing substantially to a risk of deterioration and cardiac arrest in a critically ill patient. And the prompt treatment of the arrhythmia may then reduce that risk. Secondly, an arrhythmia that is not causing instability and risk may alert you to a treatable underlying problem. For example, hypokalemia that is making the patient susceptible to the arrhythmia and also potentially susceptible to a more serious arrhythmia that could cause cardiac arrest. These situations may be seen in people who are at potential risk of a cardiac arrest but have not suffered one, or in people who have recently regained a spontaneous circulation after resuscitation from cardiac arrest. In both these situations, it's fundamentally important for you to assess every patient using the ABCDE approach, to recognise promptly when an arrhythmia is present, and to identify features which indicate an unstable situation, putting the patient at high risk of cardiac arrest. Careful assessment of the arrhythmia is needed also so that you can then make a clinical judgement on whether the arrhythmia is causing or contributing to the instability, and if so, whether immediate treatment will reduce the risk of deterioration and cardiac arrest. That immediate treatment will usually involve cardiac pacing for bradyarrhythmia and cardioversion for tachyarrhythmia, and obtaining help with the patient's treatment as soon as possible from those with the relevant expertise. Cardiac arrhythmia is very common and in many situations may not be placing a patient at high risk of rapid deterioration. In that relatively stable situation, it's important for you to consider carefully whether or not any immediate treatment is needed. That treatment would usually involve drug therapy, either to improve the heart rate or to try to restore sinus rhythm. If in doubt, it's best to obtain expert advice and you should obtain such expert advice in making a longer term plan for treating the person's rhythm abnormality. In summary, there are no major changes in recommendations regarding peri-arrest arrhythmia. The emphasis remains on using, firstly, a structured ABCDE approach to the assessment of the patient and secondly, a structured six-stage approach to the assessment of an arrhythmia. The full Resuscitation Council 2015 guidelines can be found on the Resuscitation Council UK's website, along with video summaries of all other sections.